Yo guys, what's up and welcome back to Marvelous Chats. My name is Finto. It's episode 57 of the podcast. Tonight we have Hoffman and Zaberwolf. We're going to talk about Moon Knight episode 4. We're going to talk about some nerdy news from the week. Some Star Wars stuff, some DC stuff. We might even talk about Halo a little bit. Without further ado, I'm going to bring in the guys. Give them a warm welcome. What kind of work that's... Yo guys, what's up? What's up? Upper body. Oh, hey, buddy. Hello, hello. hello. Vento. How are you? How are you doing? Good afternoon, gentlemen. How are we? Oh, we're fantastic. <laughs> are you, are, um, I know, Hoffman, you've been uh, dealing with your first case of uh, the COVID. Um, the COVID. First confirmed case I've had of it. Mind. Yeah. This whole time I've been dodging it. I, it finally got me. Yeah, I was, I was just thinking, like, you know, you... Just start working in an office and like two weeks later, boom, COVID. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Just Thanks. someone had to have carried it. The way I look Son at it, dude, bitch. just get it, get it out of the way. You're immune yeah. for like yeah. six months or whatever, and you can just chill. You don't even have to think about it again. Yeah, uh, we're it's almost behind us. Yesterday was pretty rough, you know. Yeah. Um I started feeling it like Wednesday night, I guess. And uh, you know, it's first few days were fucking really bad, and ever since it's been a slow, gradual incline, so yeah. Yeah. We're almost there. That's good. I, 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 it's funny because like I go back and re-listen to our podcast sometimes on Spotify, um, which is fantastic. But um, I re-listened to the one where I had COVID, and mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys remember, but <laughs> the day, the, it was the day after the release of Spider Man, and I sat on the podcast and was dying, dying like flop sweating. <laughs> yeah. I was fucking coughing like crazy. I was like muting the mic every two minutes to uh, to cough and stuff. And uh, I, I don't know how I got through it. Like, but listening back on it, I know I knew myself that I had it, obviously. But if 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 you didn't know, like, it would have passed. Like, you know. So I, I don't yeah. I don't know how I did it. It's one of my proudest moments on this podcast was doing it <laughs> in the height of COVID. <laughs> Struck it yeah. on through. I got uh, Had to be done. I got all the halls and like cough drops ready to go for this throw. So, fuck yeah, dude. We'll see fuck how it yeah. holds up. Yeah, if, I mean, I I have moderate asthma, so like even then I still hold on to halls. Yeah, yeah, you gotta. And um, if you want to cut it short tonight, by all means, like if we get through all the kind of top topics and stuff, like we don't need to drag it out for too long talking about silly stuff. So we can keep Never. it. To, we we can keep it to the point. You know, it might actually be better mm-hmm. for the replay value if it's less than two <laughs> hours, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah tonight on the cast we're going to talk about episode four of moon Knight. uh can't wait to hear what you guys thought of that and wild episode wild episode yeah it was pretty fucking crazy um and then we'll uh we'll kind of go through some other nerdy news from the week if you guys have any so yeah let's let's kick right in episode four what do we think uh this show like just keeps raising my expectations like it keeps like you know, after episode three, I'm like, that was a wild episode. Like, what are they going to do now? And like, they just meet it. Yeah. You know, that they're able to like expand the story, tell new parts of it that are intriguing and interesting, keep you guessing and keep you excited for the episode five. Like, this is the best MCU show we've seen. Like, this, and the Moon Knight is like one of the top MCU properties now in my mind. I just I'm in love with every character in this show. Oscar Isaac is killing it. Um, and then that ending, that ending like blew me away, man. I, I'm, episode four was absolute banger. Yeah, but- I have to agree with that. Like that was fantastic for like the twists and turns that were going around, <clears throat> and the like the ways it felt so much like the the old school like uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark and Tomb mm. Raider and just that that was really cool because like you know they're actually going through a, a, a pyramid, which is you know you you would expect it'd be something similar to like Tomb Raider or, or Indiana Jones. And like, they nailed it. And I love the, um, that, that dude that was like working on disemboweling, uh, people. That was crazy. Like, I was not expecting that at all. Like I thought that, that it was just like somebody just attacking them out of nowhere, like maybe from the group with Harrow. Um, but yeah, like that, the last 10 minutes, just, just mind blown the entire time. Yeah. I can't believe that that's where they took the whole show. And it's like the way they did it, it doesn't feel cheap either. I think so many shows try to do this like big mind twist or whatever. And they, they set it up in a way where it's like really having you questioning, like, is this actually going on? Is, you know, is this in his head? And they, they respect every episode before by the way they're doing it now instead of just like a cheap turn. 
Yeah, yeah, it, it could have really gone one of two ways, couldn't it? Like, the, you know, the second I saw the hospital, and we knew the hospital was coming as well, by the way, like, you know, it was, mm-hmm. it was in the trailers. But um, yeah, like when I, when we saw it coming, because I, I had kind of presumed that the ho- he would just get thrown into the hospital or something like that. But to mm-hmm. for the twist to come that like maybe he's been there the whole time. And again, I don't think he has. I think this is uh, to kind of make a prediction. I think he's kind of in purgatory at the moment. And I think this, mm-hmm. you know, he's I think what has actually happened to him in the episode, I think he has actually been shot and I think he he's actually in purgatory. So I don't think the hospital actually exists. Um, that's that's my prediction anyway. But I think it was just amazing. It was incredible how they did it because they proper kind of kept us on our toes. Like you don't know what's real and what's not anymore because you're seeing all the characters popping up that we've seen so far in the series and they're in the hospital as well. Like, so you're kind of just like, oh my God, has this whole thing just been in his fucking head? It's it's great. It's great. It's definitely keeping me on my toes watching it. I th- yeah. yeah. I- go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I was I was actually thinking about the the moment where he's walking through the the hallway and then he sees like the open doors and whatnot. I kind of wanted him to just peer in. Like it, I'm not saying that this is a like this is something that they should add, but it would have been cool to see um, like him looking through every window and just seeing like different renditions of whatever it is that's going on in that hospital, uh, as opposed to just seeing open doors and and like seeing the sarcophagi, which like you know great way to like show that his other personality was just being locked away yeah dude yeah and so like i i wonder you know finto brings up if it's purgatory and that could absolutely be the case but i'm also curious if this isn't like a creation of arthur hollow like this is something he's doing to mark specter to the moon knight or whatever to try to get something out of his head that like he needs like he needs something from him in his mind and he so he's like trying he's putting him there to try and get it out so I watched a breakdown, so I can't take any credit for this, but I watched a breakdown and you know the scene where he walks around the corner and you see the light fixtures and they're swinging back and forth. Um, mm-hmm. People are saying that he, they think that he's on that boat. There's like a boat. It's like Greek. It's like a Egyptian mythology or whatever that. Mm. It, it's kind of like the boat that rides you from one place to the other. So purgatory or whatever, something, something similar. And gotcha. um, so they think that that's what's happening, that he's on his journey between the living and the dead and you basically are judged on this boat if you have lived a good life you you go uh, either up or down you know so uh, i think that's where he is and what's what's probably going to happen is i'm going to guess again i have no idea but this is just my guess i would predict that um what's the girl's name again Le- is it layla layla yeah layla is going to rescue or is going to break free conchu somehow and then conchu will resurrect specter and i i think that's a he'll like and it'll be like down to the fucking wire like you know he'll just about to pass and i'd say he'll get revived that's that's my guess um yeah i and, feel like that's where it's and, going and another another uh reference is like with the with the mental hospital um i can't remember the the comic that it came from but in, in the comic it actually turned out that amit was the one like controlling that hospital yeah. Like she, she was the the psychologist in in mm. like like talking to Mark Spector and then making trying to make him believe that he's just been like here this whole time, and so like we're getting kind of a rendition with that with this live action with Harrow, which I think is even cooler because it's still a, an avatar of Amit, which is like you know totally makes sense. You know, got to put more Ethan Hawke in there. Like he's doing a fantastic job. Just. I believed him so much, like during that conversation between him and Mark, that was nuts. Like it was amazing. And, and he just, and, yeah. And he's just repeating the same words that he said when, when, uh, when Mark was still alive, it was just, it's mind blowing. Yeah, it really was. It is. really is. And I Ethan love, is, he is killing it in the show. Like killing it, man. Yeah. And I, mm-hmm. I, I absolutely loved as well. Um, Oscar in that scene where he's sitting in the chair and he's kind of like snapping out of the meds that he's under or whatever. And, you know, his brain is kind of becoming a bit free and he sees the cane and, you know, it's, yeah, it was just amazing. Like watching all that unfold and such, such incredible acting from Oscar. Like he's, he's blowing me away in this season. Like, and I really, I know we kind of mentioned before on a cast that, you know, he's only contracted for this series and nothing else. I pray that he does something else. Like, you know, guy comes into a movie or something or 
another series or you know Midnight Suns or something like you know he's got to keep it going like I'd yeah be, I'd be so upset if this if it was like if he did if he didn't want to come back or something you know Ugh. that would like it was almost like up. a yeah, like just, it was almost like a one and done like yeah. almost like with the Sony pictures where you see like a one and done and that's it I pray, I pray, I pray that's not what we're getting. I don't, I don't think so. I think he's in it for the long haul now because it's getting great reception and, um, yeah, I, I, I think it's great. What did we think of the uh, the hippo at the end? <laughs> oh, oh, that was Good great. Old, uh, what's her name? Towerette or something? I think is what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of like the way like a lot of people were building up this episode was. I thought, and I thought this myself, you know, we were going to get a crazy cameo. And I thought that was going to be the, the big drop. But obviously the, the drop that people were referring to is is just the hospital and the kind of the change of the narrative of the show. So, Oh, is the hippo god not good enough for you? <laughs> no, absolutely not. I kind of just laughed at it. I thought it was a joke. Like, you know, I was hoping to see Banner or something to show up. Like, right. you know, um, I yeah. wanted it to, to connect to the MCU somehow. But look, I... I t- you know, I'm not taking anything away from the episode. It was fantastic. I just thought that just the way people were building it up and stuff, I just I thought it was going to be something more significant to the MCU that we got, right? Rather, rather than right. A, a giant hippo. <laughs> well, well, I mean, if you if you think about it, if if this is all like a figment or like somewhere where he's in, where the the other Egyptian gods are nearby, then it would make sense to have Tabo Ret like just show up. Mm. Um, whereas like if it's blade or something, it's like, how the hell did you get into the, into like the Uber void or the mind or in this hospital or anything? Yeah. Um, so I, I still think that we have a chance to get some sort of cameo in episode five and six, mm-hmm. but, uh, from what it seems like, um, they've already said that Tawaret is going to be in the last two episodes. So we're going to see a lot more of the hippo goddess. Okay. Okay. I have no problem with that. Like, you know, it's, I'm, I'm along for the ride no matter what. I just thought there would be something a little more significant. Now, I'd say maybe we might get a cameo when he comes back to the land of the living. I, maybe. I don't, I don't know. Um, what did you make of, like, the, the mummies and stuff? I thought that was kind of dark, and, I, you know, it was, like, the first kind of little glimpse into a little bit of a horror sequence that we've seen in the show. I, I was loving it. Like, I was getting, like, mummy vibes off it and stuff. Like, it was, it was really Dude. cool. Really, 100 percent mummy vibes like mm-hmm. and especially mm-hmm. like layla like she feels like the actress I, I i forget the name of the actress i wish i looked up for this who played in the mummy but like it feels like she's like just vibing with that performance so much yeah um and i just i i loved it you're it is the mummy like it, it feels that way it felt that good and they you know they even the heart down in the hospital scene when they showed like the videotape or whatever is like the Tomb Raider, <laughs> yeah. uh, or Tomb Buster. Yeah, that you know. was so good. Um, so so it's just cool. Like I, I loved it. It felt like the Mummy is, is a great scene, man. Like I love that type of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I love how dark it got with the with the disemboweling scene. I know I mentioned it earlier, but like you actually got to you know you couldn't see what the hell he was dropping into the into the canopy jar, but like you, <laughs> you could clearly tell it's like entrails. Or oh something. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah like you, you know you can you can you can put two and two together. I think on that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, um, the, one of the one of the biggest things though i thought was so amazing was the fact that they included like these kind of historical moments in the show as well like um i believe like in actual history like nobody knows where alexander the great's body mm-hmm. actually is right yeah so like isn't it like i think i just thought it was so cool that they actually found a sarcophagus and he was like a an avatar of Amit, which like that would totally make sense. He was a great conqueror. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was great. I thought it was great. I'm um, like, I just this this show like hasn't missed a step yet, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Like you know, and I know some people are kind of complain, compl- not complaining, but critiquing like the fact that they thought there would be more fucking action more fighting you know that sort of thing and i can i can i can completely get by it because it's just been so good yeah Mm -hmm. i don't know what these people want like do they like this is what a gonna be a seven hour um like show like it's seven episodes right like so by the end of it or six episodes um so it's they want like five hours of action like it's just not possible like movies can't even do that on their budgets man so you know, this is a TV show. It's not actually nonstop, but you know, if the the story's been so good, the acting's been so good. Oscar Isaac, 
uh, Ethan Hawke in it. Like their interactions have been so great. Like just, I don't know what these people want, man. Like, like what? It's just so good. Yeah. This is as good as it's going to get in the MCU when it comes to television. Like, you know, just go with it. Stop wanting not action yeah. from like stop, start to finish. These fucking people are Michael Bay fans, bro. Like they love, yes. <laughs> they just want to see buildings explode and fucking transformers and shit. You know, they're no. not they're not into storytelling. <laughs> no, <laughs> it reminds me of that uh, that seated at uh, that seated South Park. You know, where they bring Michael Bay and it's just like, so we start yes. with a CG building and, blah, 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 and, all, and he's just like, those are special effects, not storylines. <laughs> incredible, incredible, love it. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think as well what else happened in the episode um, I'll say this about the episode and I don't know if it was too much if I'm confusing episode 3 and 4 and what was in it but I remember when we were talking about them going to Egypt and how long we were going to spend in Egypt and I was like oh they could only do like one episode in Egypt and that was so completely wrong this is like the first um, this is one of the first shows I've ever watched in movies that actually treats Egypt as like kind of a modern city. Mm. You know, it's not just ancient Egypt, you know, tomb raid. Like they actually go into the city and like it makes it feel like a modern city and fun to be in and way more interesting than I just think Egypt has been showcased in such a long time. And I, I, you know, shout out to the director and the people who are shooting this and the cinematographers and stuff because I just, I, I love the way Egypt's portrayed in this. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, and one of the biggest things that I think is happening right now is the fact that like we're kind of in chapters. And I know I mentioned that in like pre- in the previous podcast, but like you know, episode one and two, they're in London. Episode three and four, they were in Egypt. And now we're getting into five and six. So I wonder how long we're going to be in the hospital and then going back into the the pyramid. Mm. Or or what if they moved his body? Like you know, it's going to be this moment of of like introspective like how long is it going to be stay stuck in this area because this is a new chapter and Mm -hmm. i i think they're just doing really good like really good work with the with these acts and and it's just it's all culminating together you're not getting you're not getting like stale settings it's changing like within two episodes which is comfortable it feels nice and it feels like you know they're giving you a change of pace every single two episodes yeah Mm. yeah no it is it it is like chapters like you said It, it absolutely is I definitely think episode five is going to be a big flashback episode where we're going to go back and see the origins of a lot of what's going on now. Uh, possibly some Arthur Harrow, like as Moon Knight or whatever. Like That'd be you sweet. Know, just, yes. Yeah, and that'd like, be great. You know, I think we're going to see a lot of flashbacks, especially if it's, this is like kind of purgatory, like you're saying, and they're trying to say, like, is he, you know, going up or down? Yeah. Um, we're going to see a lot of like his history, which I think we kind of would, I would love to see. I don't know if we need it right but like it'd be awesome to see it's yeah. his actual origins we gotta see we, we gotta see um we gotta see mark specter ki- uh, kill layla's dad as well or be involved in the death of him yeah you know that we, we mm-hmm. have we have to see that and we have to see um obviously his death and his resurrection by mm-hmm. by Kanju, yeah, and then he'll get resurrected again like now in current times like we'll see it twice a bit yeah, because yep. they're they're really teasing Bushman right now. You know the the guy that that was in the comics that that actually killed, you know, um, Layla's father. Yeah, and you know, it, I I really hope we get to see him uh, at least in the flashbacks. And I think what would be a really cool take is that although we do get flashbacks, we get like a like a slide like a slide situation like a, a like they're still in the in the hospital, but they have a projector that's like portraying the the video of his flashbacks. Mm-hmm. I think that would be really cool. Oh, kind of like, kind of Loki moment. Yeah, I was gonna say like Loki. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> quickest hands in the West. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. The there was a bit as well that I wanted to talk about. Oh my god, I can't think of it now off the top of my head. Um, yeah. Again, back to mummy vibes, but like there was massive mummy vibes when you know where she was running away from the from the mummy and like sneaking through the the tunnels and the 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 ledges were collapsing and stuff like that. Like I was like, oh my god! And then she just turns and Harrow's just standing there chilling on the other side. <laughs> I thought that was great. I thought that was yeah. great. I can't and get I, over Arthur Harrow. I can't get over his character. I oh, love it's, him. It's phenomenal. Yeah, it's phenomenal. one of my favorite villains in the entire MCU. He's so cool. 
and he's, he's, he doesn't he, even have to really attack a you. villain as well like you know it's like I, he's not that villainous like you know that's the funny thing yeah. like he's he's not out to destroy the world or anything like that he just you know well maybe he will soon like if he gets what he wants but <laughs> I, he know, wants I, to go half to it <laughs> yeah yeah he's, he's trying to make the ultimate balance which will never work yeah yeah because like you it's know like- what he's trying to do is, you know, he has been Moon Knight and he realizes he's like, I want to stop these crimes before they even happen. So he's like, you know, I, if anything, he's got the ideals right. He's trying to be a, go- a good person. But, you know, you can't you can't uh, judge somebody on something before they've done it because, you know, I suppose anything, right. anything can happen. You know, butterfly effect, you know, the smallest thing can change things and so on. But... Um, I don't think it's as as uh, as black and white as you know being able to just look into the future and make a choice that you know I might decide that I want to kill somebody because whatever like you know it's mm-hmm. it's, it's it's not yeah. uh, it's not bulletproof you know right and and one of the big things about this is that I don't know if you guys noticed but this is kind of like a rehashing of Thanos because Thanos wants to you know get rid of half of the the entire population of the universe. So that everyone can stay like healthy and there's like plentiful uh, resources for everyone, but that's that you, that can only happen for so long. So even if you try to balance, you know, the ways of life and and judge people ahead of time before they even you know do something wrong, eventually like that's not going to work out. You know, uh, near the end, someone's going to find a way to like break that that chain, and it's all going to happen all over again. So I, I like it's not like Arthur Harrow's. You know, ideals aren't original, but they are an improvement of of what Thanos originally wanted to do, because like I actually like the way he he converses with people and gets them to like think like think on the inside. Oh, you want to join his call? Oh, I can even see this. <laughs> what the heck, man? He's got the tattoo already. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's yeah, here it is now. Um. I, I like it's one of those things of like they made a villain that people would actually be like, well, actually, that makes sense. You know, like it, it's it, what they did with Thanos. Like, you know, all those mu- like they had Thanos mug. Thanos was right mugs. They have Thanos was right, like written on the on the stall, like in in Hawkeye, because you know there are people in the world who believe that, and that's why Harrow had followers. That's mm-hmm. why they believe in Amit. That's why they believe in in like the ideals. And I and I like how they're kind of redoing this, but in a better way because we actually engage with the villain before like any sort of chaotic things actually occur. That's a tough sell for me. I like Thanos method better. It's impartial. We're not gonna look at you. Look, we're just doing it for the sake of it. We're not gonna do it because you know what you do in your life. Um, I will say I, I do love the way they make him feel like a cult leader. And I, you know, there was all these stories about people calling out how bad his Mandarin was when he was speaking it in episode two. And then come to find out that was kind of a production thing is to make it the fact that he wasn't really speaking Mandarin that well, if saying Mandarin words at all. But like his cult followers were like are so into him and so devoted. They're like, yes, 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 because they love him so much. Yeah. And like that's just like a kind of a cool little nod to um, the, the idea of him being this psychotic cult leader that everyone will follow. Um, like our friend Alex here, who is a uh, right hand man. For, right there. I'm not for Amit. Like I swear, I'm not for Amit. I feel like, like we I, watch I, this back. <laughs> I mean, I don't. <laughs> we may have to keep this tape as evidence for uh, later, <laughs> just in case. We start showing up wearing all like crocodile things, you know. I have the glass in my Got shoes. The cane, the cane, and all. <laughs> the hair starts Grow growing hair out long. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you have you guys got any predictions for for episode five on Wednesday? No, all my predictions are coming aren't coming true at all. So like, I just I give it up. You keep it your mouth shut. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems like like for the most part, we're we're trying to like say like there's flashbacks, there's flashbacks because even before we were like, okay, well episode four is gonna have flashbacks, mm. and then even with episode three, we're like, okay, well we're gonna have some flashbacks about that because our the hero was you know originally was Moon Knight. And like it, we're we're just and we're also being thrown like back and forth like we don't know where we're going and I and this is what I really love this is what Loki should have been mm. yes because it was just like it was too obvious like remember that remember the episode uh, right before um, where they're sitting down and like 
that uh, what was it called uh prometheus one or something like that the the, the planet it was being like mm. atta- like it was about to be bombarded by meteors and destroyed and so like planet, right yeah and so the like at the end of it you're like okay well they're stuck and we all predicted that you know the tva is just going to go and and save them and mm-hmm. lo and behold it happens yeah and we all and we were all disgusted by how right we were yeah, yeah it, was, <laughs> it was so obvious. It, it was it was very obvious i suppose the only I'm, thing the only thing i didn't see coming in that show was when the very end where they went back and he was he had come back to a different timeline that was the only thing I didn't yeah. really see coming. <laughs> you know, everything else was very obvious. Oh, so bad. Yeah. So bad. <laughs> I see like, but, the problem with my Moon Knight predictions. It's like last week I was like, you know, I think Kang's going to be one of the gods that uh, Arthur Harold thinks he's worshipping. And then they give us a hippo god <laughs> at the very end. <laughs> so like I'm so off base with like my predictions. Like uh, I'm just going to enjoy the show now. I think you're right, though, the the Kang prediction that you're making. Like, I'm seeing a lot of people talking about that. I think that is coming. I think we'll get that before the end of the show. So I think maybe you're just a little early on that prediction. Look at me. Yeah, again, quickest guns in the West. (laughs) They can all credit the Marvelous Chats. (laughs) We know they're well. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, Finto, how do you feel about the idea that um, everything that... Mark Spector and Stephen Grant have gone through so far has all been like kind of a show and, and that like him being in the hospital was actually just him trying to replay everything in his mind as if it were like a show. Um, I think, I don't think that that's what's going on. I think what we've seen so far has actually been the real world. Um, and I think where he is now is he's on that boat and that's, we're going to maybe see flashbacks in the next episode, which I think is great that we've gone four episodes and we haven't seen flashbacks yet because I, I don't really like when shows go hit the flashbacks straight away. It's like, get us grounded first. You know, let us let us, let us us love the characters. Let us see what's going on in the real world. And then if we have a need to go back, which I think we do, I want to see his death and so on. But, I, you know, don't start with that. Like, you know, I think, you know, slowly build us to it. Um, mm-hmm. and I suppose like you know I'm watching a lot of the the, the Netflix shows uh, again and I'm watching The Punisher and stuff and it's like I finished episode 4 and it's like just th- fucking 13 episodes I'm like you know if this was a D- if this was a Disney Plus show we'd nearly be done you know whereas like yeah. I'm just like we're not we're only I just finished the first third of the show you know I've got two more to go like you know like my girlfriend said to me it's like oh like Castle's only meeting Madonna now and it's episode four. I was like, yeah, but there's 13. She's like, oh yeah, I forgot. You know, we're kind of in the, the <laughs> six episode mindset now, you know? So yeah, it's, it's, it's refreshing just having a lot of story to be told. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, what, I don't know why what, Disney has this like such like a six episode mindset. Mm, and then it feels like yeah. they can't even fill those six episodes. It is weird. Yeah, it is weird. Yeah. Like, why are they not like kind of copying? Because like, again, I, I, I went and looked this up today. My girlfriend asked me like, oh, like, like how does like Daredevil and Punisher rate like, you know, uh, audience wise against each other? And I was like, I don't th- I think Daredevil was like far superior, but I actually checked it and there's only like, like one's 8.5, the other's 8.6. Like, so they're very close. Um, and I think that's the model that works. Like, Disney should be just fucking trying to copy that as much as possible. You know, because, like, everyone just absolutely ate those shows up. And yeah, I think six episodes is too short. Seven's too short. Eight's too short. Like, give us ten. Ten minimum, I think. You know? And then if you want to do a couple of fillers and, like, you know, tell us stories and give us flashback episodes and, you know, fill in the gaps, give us history, I think that's great. But you can't do that with six episodes. Mm-hmm. And you, you definitely can't miss. Like, if you only have six episodes, you can't yeah. miss yeah. at all. Yeah. And this mm-hmm. show hasn't, but there have been plenty of Disney Plus shows oh, that yeah. have. Yeah. Like, if I'm going back to rewatch WandaVision, I'm skipping the first three episodes. Like, you know what I mean? I'm only <laughs> going to watch half of it. <laughs> yeah. So, like, that 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 should be alarm bells for Disney. You know, they should, like, if, if, if people like me are saying, I won't even rewatch those first two episodes anyway, the first two for sure, maybe I'll start with three, but... You know, that that should be alarm bells ringing for them. What what have we done wrong here, you know? Um, yeah. And I think, like, I, I rewatched the second half of Loki on Christmas Christmas uh, Day. Like, and it was cool. It was cool watching it, like, uh, one after the other. It was, like, two-hour long j- journey. I thought it was pretty cool. It was good. But I think that show was just, like, a little too slow paced for a weekly release, you know? Right. I think, it, I think it, it hit a lot more watching them back-to-back. You know, 
I think with here. with WandaVision though, there was there were these moments where I real I actually did like the first three episodes, but I think they could have scrunched it down to one. Mm. You know, they they really could have just shortened it down to one, kind of show that that nothing's at as as it seems. And then by the end of that first episode, it like all hell breaks loose, and then we start up the show, and it's in 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 the reality of it. Because I think that's what was really dragging it was was the fact that like, you know, it was it was cool seeing like all these different types of shades of you know uh, like eras, mm. but it just it it took too long to show that like nothing was as it seems, mm-hmm. and and there like we needed more like you had to really feed us. Like you gave us a you gave us a huge plate and we couldn't finish it all in one spot. So like that's why it took so long for us to to actually enjoy it. And yeah, and and I just I like it's like once they got once you got past the idea of it, you're like okay they're doing like a 1950s, and then it's like you said it just took forever. It's like the first five minutes of it, you're like oh this is kind of fun, and it's like nope now you got 20 more minutes of this nonsense. You're like exactly, <laughs> you know it's so slow because it's the 1950s. That's how they did shows. And Marvel, it's like Marvel had this idea and they couldn't get away from it. Mm-hmm. I'd say on paper they thought they were fucking geniuses, bro. We're going back to the, <laughs> yeah, fi- we're yeah, going back totally. to the, yeah, they're like we're going back to the fifties. We're gonna make everybody laugh. It's gonna be incredible. I just watched it going. This is horseshit. Hated yeah. it. Hated it. Just not my style of comedy at all. When they got to the seventies and stuff, I thought it got a little funnier. And you know, I was like, again, I I, I say this again, but like I don't know how they had the mother from that 70s show and they didn't make any 70s shows references. Like, I thought that was crazy. Right? <laughs> like, yeah, it was it's like, nuts. you have the actress, like, do something. Like, and, I, oh, that man. was such a miss. Like, <laughs> such a missed opportunity. And like, how, and, and the funny thing is, to me, it's like, if you go back and watch old Vin, Dick Van Dyke shows or you go back and watch I Love Lucy shows, like, they're funny. Like, I'll watch them uh, and like, I'll get a good laugh out of them because they're actually funny. And like these, the, the the bits just didn't work. Like it just, it just wasn't funny. Yeah, I mean, w- was was Bewitched uh, like a beloved show? Because I I really liked Bewitched. You know, I remember Bewitched watching was, it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I know that <clears throat> I know they were trying to take off from like Bewitched, but I think they they went a little too <clears throat> of like they they tried to go a little too original with themselves. Mm. You know, and I think that's that's the problem is that like although that the, they have these ideas. And yes, they tack on to things that, that we've had referenced in the past. I think they're trying to really put a spin on it and be like, ah, we're original, right? And then no, it doesn't hit the it doesn't hit the nail on the head. Right. Yep. Yeah, fact. Fact. Yeah. But um I wanted to say Fento, I think uh, part of me thinks that the reason why you were kind of enjoying more of the further eras is because, you know, of course, as we get older, you know, we, we reminisce about the shows that we've watched in the past. Yeah. And unless you've actually watched, you know, fifties shows, fifties or sixties shows, <clears throat> you're not really going to appreciate them as much as, as like when they show up on WandaVision. Cause you know, I did watch I love, I love Lucy and it's great. I know everybody loves the iconic, you know, chalk the factory uh, episode or the, the wine episode where, you know, they're crushing the grapes and and people remember that, but if you've never watched it, like why would you even care yeah. if it's on Wandavision? Of course, of course, right. And like I, I I feel the same thing for like even if you talk about Star Wars, like you know someone today watching A New Hope for the very first time is going to be like, oh my god, what is this? Like you know, <laughs> it's just so old, so outdated. Like it's just it's hard to watch, like, you know. So yeah, and like over here, I don't think shows like I Love Lucy and stuff were really big over here, and maybe they were when it was released, but like replays wouldn't be shown on Irish TV of that show. So like, you know, you had to go looking for it or it had to be a kind of tradition in a family or something, I'd say, for people to know it. Like, you know, it's not going to be popping up on the 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 standard TV channels over here, you know. So that's, mm-hmm. again, that's why it was a big miss for me, whereas it's probably replayed for you guys a lot on some of your channels over there. So, you know, people are exposed to it a lot more. You're, you're absolutely mm-hmm. right. Yeah, I wish I wish they would have done like the whole concept of the fifties to the seventies. I wish that was like a one episode arc. Yeah. Like if that would have been the opener yeah. and they would have like took you through all the arrows real quick and so it was like, you know, ten minutes on each era, I think that would have been worked better. Yeah. Uh to be mm-hmm. to, like get you the concept to keep you not getting tired of it. Um I think I don't know, I think it would work better for me. Yeah. yeah well yeah, you're cause, right. Cause then like you, you could make it so that, you know, first ten minutes at like near the last two minutes it starts glitching. And then she has to change it. And so then she changes it to a new era. Mm-hmm. 
Right. And so she keeps trying to change it and change it. And then you realize like, oh, crap, like things aren't going as as planned. And so that's when it starts spiraling, spiraling out. And then it pulls back from the TV and you see that there's other people watching. Yeah. Yep. God damn. I find it hard to talk about WandaVision. Uh, we have banned WandaVision talk in my household <laughs> because my girlfriend hates me talking about it. Because I'm like, fuck this. And she's like the biggest Wanda stand. Like she loves her. Oh, okay. um, so I, I can't I can't critique WandaVision in this house. Oh, I'd, I'd say, she's not home right now, right? I'd say she, no, no, she's at work. <laughs> if, no, if she was here, I'd have been like, hey, guys, I got to take I care of something for a little bit. You guys keep on about WandaVision. Uh, is she is she? <laughs> Is she looking forward to um, Multiverse of Madness? Like, pumped for it, pumped for it in a she, way that, like, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to just ask: Is she? Will she be happy with Wanda kind of being the villain and going dark side? Yeah. Yes, she wants. She wants this bitch to tear everything down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do too. I do too. I absolutely yeah. do too. Um, oh. I'm, I'm so fucking excited. Just uh, to kind of shimmy off the WandaVision talk. Like, <laughs> Multiverse of Alice <laughs> is so close, guys. So close. And two weeks, uh, Less than right? two weeks away. Yeah. Oh, it's... Like, I can't wait. I cannot wait. Um, you know Kevin Feige has, like, the biggest... <laughs> He's the biggest asshole when he gets um, Multiverse of Madness to release on May 5th. Like, yeah. you know that Star Wars weekends, bro. Yeah. You know yeah. it is. <laughs> like, it's like, hey, Star Wars, yeah, you want to celebrate uh, May the 4th and, you know, re- Revenge Ooh, of the 5th and stuff? He's like, nope, everyone's going to be talking to us. He's got to hate Kathleen Kennedy. He's got to have something against her. <laughs> she, like, turned him down for an internship, like, 20 years ago. That's the, pow- that's the power <laughs> that that man as well has with Disney, that he can actually successfully do that as well, you know? It's like, mm-hmm. let give kevin whatever he wants i think he's pulled in i think i read before he's pulled in 28 billion dollars of revenue for for disney from all the marvel oh movies together like that number is terrifying to think about 28 billion i mean would it be there any, anyone else on the planet in history who's generated that type of wealth i think he'll go down in history as like one of the best producers in 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 history like in hollywood history like like you gotta take like imagine him retiring in 20 years time or whatever and just the resume that he has like it'll be mm-hmm. mind-blowing and it'll i don't think it'll ever be topped yeah, yeah. And doing things you didn't think were possible like him getting uh no way home to happen mm-hmm. that only happens because of kevin feige is such a good producer yeah. like he's so good at bringing people together and getting people to the table getting them in the same room and be like hey What's the problem? Let's work this out. Let's get this to like, let's make some money here. And that's his job. And, you know, everyone thinks it's, you know, everyone has their own opinions on what his job is. But the producer's role in large part is like making things just run. And he has built a machine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, it's almost, it's almost so big now that it's, it's nearly in an autopilot kind of mode. You know, like I'd be very curious I'd love to ask him, like, you know, how much work are you putting in today as opposed to what you were putting in in 2008 or 2009, mm-hmm. 2010? You know, I, I would say he's doing substantially less work himself. And I think, like, you know, the, the projects are kind of just building themselves now at this stage. Uh, I might be completely wrong with that. Like, you know, maybe he's doing twice the work now. I, I, I don't know. But, like, I get the feeling that because he's so spread out and so, so, like, there's so much going on, he can't be working at... The level that he was beforehand you know it, it wouldn't be possible he's one fucking man like there's no way no yeah, way right like, there's like got to be close to 40 projects on the on the go at the moment like you know there's no way he's heavily involved in everything he can't be no he yeah. and like I, I think he's probably doing twice the work he did but less on each project right like probably mm-hmm. the way to think about because like you're right there's 40 projects going on they want him doing a star wars uh series um and you know sony wants a bit of him to help out their spider verse he's just all over the place yeah yeah he but is does the multiverse it, but does it translate like has like correct me if i'm wrong but has kevin feige ever gone out of marvel Ooh, no that's that's I don't know. gonna be I, interesting i think one of his first jobs was the first x-men movie to be honest so he's been with marvel i think the whole time as far as i know right so because he's a he's a huge nerd yeah so like it it really helps to have a to have a big nerd making all this money Mm -hmm. and and like 
you know, if he's going off and doing like Star Wars stuff or if he goes into other types of like, you know, um, classes of, of, of uh, what am I trying to say? Like, movie, like, you know, yeah, genres. Then, you know, we will see if he actually is a titan of the industry in terms of like that. being an all star. I'd love to see him, you know, jump into <laughs> to sound outrageous. But imagine he jumped into like the Fast franchise or something like imagine he made a banger of a Fast <laughs> and Furious movie. Like that'd be the true test or like Transformers or something like because Transformers. The first two movies were well, the first movie was incredible. The second movie was you know, dropping off severely, and the third one, you were it was a downward spiral the whole time, uh, to a point where I just stopped watching them. I couldn't watch them anymore. But imagine he jumped on to like a re- a reboot of Transformers and turned it into like the Marvel. Like you know, that would really just prove to you how good he actually is. Or if he took Fast Eleven and just made it a fucking banger, like you know. In in regards to Transformers, though, like. How how long did it take before you just stopped caring about Optimus Prime? I love him so much. Like, he's such a great character. Mm. And then they just, like, it just ruined itself over time. And after a while, I'm like, I don't even care if I see Optimus anymore. Like, it, that you should never say that when it comes to, to Transformers. Yeah. I, I, know, I know the exact moment that I fell out of love with Transformers. And it was when Sam, in the second movie, dies or, like and he goes to the autobot heaven <laughs> and like he's like looking at the autobot gods and then he's like we're gonna send you back you're not finished yet and it's like why would this man die and go like to see them like you know i was like this is the most stupidest fucking shit i've ever seen and that like i just oh it was absolutely outrageous bro i could not believe it couldn't believe what i was watching and, and like, didn't they get into his brain too? And then he had like all this information. And he's like that starting was, to write it yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was kind of fucking stupid as well. It was like he touches an artifact or something, and then just like it's imprinted in his brain. Yeah. Oh, it, bro. Well, like that's. But the, the thing is, it's like I get it. Like you, you want to include humans in Transformers, and yes, they were in like humans were in Transformers in the in the cartoons, but after enough human interaction it's time to just have like the transformers like they have their story they have things that they need to work out but because the humans are on this planet like we got to involve the humans it's like come on dude yeah like, we can't have too much of this like i remember i remember just all the all the moments in transformers where it's like oh star screams at it again you know he's attacking he's attacking the the autobots base and and like trying to cause mayhem trying to lure them out so megatron can like get into the base and grab some stuff and like you know steal their steal their information so that like he can he can like kind of progress his plans and then or or when the autobots are like hey megatron's base is over here he's about to start up some some stuff so like let's go and attack him yeah. and it's just those moments like ha- like happening across each other or or even like planning to to attack each other that was the fun of transformers mm. yeah yeah i i bro i only I, watched the first one yeah <laughs> i cut it yeah no like i think they came out in like 2007 so like i was just finished high school like and just you know I was I was the perfect I think I was the perfect age for those movies you know like just like Megan Fox and so on like and I just thought like ah oh, these are amazing like but they just the storyline got so bad that they even lost me like and I was pr- like I was the prime candidate for like a movie like that like and they just it got too ridiculous like I had to bail mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah shocking just, I, just like like too much too much of this like eye candy stuff too like I yeah. didn't need any of that yeah, yeah. I don't care I really don't. I just want to see the Autobots and the and the Decepticons. Yeah, yeah. Like and you, 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 like faster, do, fast do the same stuff all the time as well. Like you know, it's like they're they're just like they bank on just having like half naked women and stuff. And like you know, at a certain point, you're kind of like, uh, you know, I can see that whenever I want. Let's just get on with the movie, please. Like you know, <laughs> it's like we don't need it in a film. Like you know, the fourteen year olds that you're doing this for, they're not even allowed into the theater to watch the fucking thing. So like, why are why why are you doing this? Like you know. Um, mm-hmm. Booker Bush in the chat mentioned uh, X Men, and yeah, like we've talked about this on the podcast oh. many times, many times. But like, yeah, X Men is going to be huge. Um, what do we think? Because I know I don't know if I sent this to you guys. I I saw a TikTok the the other day, and it was Hugh Jackman talking about um, he predicted 
the big crossover like the multiverse of madness basically he predicted it like in 2012 or he was kind of saying that like that's what he wanted and he was that's what his hopes were for for you know all the characters and for logan and stuff like that and that just kind of makes me think even more because i know there was pictures that surfaced between him and of him and feige meeting up not too long ago i really would not be surprised if we got if we saw hugh jackman in this movie multiverse of madness i mean um Mm -hmm. I mean, have we seen any uh, pictures of Hugh Jackman out and about in a while where we can see the condition of his arms at this moment and how ripped they are? Um, I think I saw a video. He's in, the, like, he's something, I think, if you go onto his Instagram, I I think there's a video from maybe less than six months ago, and he's he's lifting some pretty heavy weights in the gym. Like, so I was like, oh, he's training again. <laughs> now, that could be Here for any, go, baby. That could be for any role, to be fair. Like, that might not be just for Logan, but... Um, and to be honest, I think if they were going to bring Logan back for a very small two, three minute cameo, they just put the leather jacket on him. Like, you know, they don't even need, he doesn't even need to get jacked for that. But, uh, right. if he is fair play to him, <laughs> you know, committed, committed. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just loved, I love the fact that he talked about it in 2012. He's like, I know they're making Avengers and I'd love to see Spider-Man and X-Men and fantastic, all these people together. And it's just like, oh bro, like you're, you're 10 years early, but like, this is what's happening now, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, like I would like to see Hugh Jackman in this movie. Um, I don't think I want to see Hugh Jackman in the rest of the MCU, though. Mm. Um, like I, 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 I'm always excited to see Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. I'm excited to see um, Patrick Stewart come back as uh, Professor X for one last time. Yeah. Uh, but like I, I hope they don't use this as their way to get all the X-Men into the universe. I, I don't want the Fox universe. I, I don't want their X-Men here. Um, you know, there, there is some great casting, but overall they have not treated the franchise that well. They didn't do great origins with them. They didn't really make the X-Men feel like X-Men. They did it for like a brief moment in first class and it was like, they ruined it after that. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. so I, I just, I want the MCU to have their own take on the X-Men. I want them to build their own X-Men from the ground up. Um, I, I would like to, you know, if if we get to see a couple X-Men in Multiverse of Madness briefly as cameos, that's fun for sure. Um, but like, I, I really want them to start building the X-Men, uh, sooner than later. And, you know, now that we got Disney plus, it's probably, if they put the money into it, it's probably the best place that we can see the X-Men, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, because I would like to, you know, X-Men is a show that you could do, you know, 13 episodes. Cause there's so much to explore, so much to yeah. tell. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. I, th- I think, uh. I think I would really love to see the uh, the actor who played um, Colossus though in Deadpool. I, I thought he did a pretty good job. He'll, like he, I think he, like might, he was fun. He might come because I think what's going to mm. happen is um, like the whole cast of Deadpool. Like I've heard something. I don't. This is a rumor. I don't think it's a it's a leak or anything. But I've heard that there's a, a potential scene, whether it makes the movie or not. But I hear there's a potential scene where a door opens in the Illuminati museum or whatever you want to call it and Deadpool and like his Mrs. Veron or what's her name Victoria or whatever um mm-hmm. and like Cable and like you know a few other people from the Deadpool universe they all walk through the door together and it's just like he Deadpool makes a funny joke about being in a new universe or something like that and that's like the intro for them coming across uh now whether they whether they use that or not I don't know but uh mm-hmm. I, I think that's what's going to happen. You know, I think we're going to get like the entire cast of Deadpool just coming, like just getting plopped right into the MCU. I think that's mm-hmm. what's going to happen. So I think that version of Colossus will hang around. And like Booker Bush mentioned in the chat there uh, about um, Michael Fassbender, absolutely love him. Like, you know, and mm-hmm. it's like if you bring one, you know, will they want to bring more? But I think if you could only have one, it would be him. It would have to be, right? Like he he's such mm-hmm. a great Magneto. Um, if it was like, you know, you can only choose one to bring across. It would be him all day, I think. Because uh, I know Jackman wouldn't be around for long, but I think you could probably get 10 more years out of Fastbender easily. Oh, uh, yeah. If, if not more. If, yeah, because Magneto, you know, once he starts getting gray hair, that's when he starts looking like Magneto. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you can pull him in forever. The older, the better. <laughs> Whereas yeah. Jackman, obviously not. But, uh, yeah, like, and, you I, know, I've... Like, my, my biggest issue with Magneto is, like, how are they going to do the Holocaust thing, right? Mm-hmm. You know, we're in 2020. And I was listening to somebody talk about it. And they brought up these great ideas about Magneto and the MCU. 
And how the reason that we might not have uh, mutants in the MCU is that they're, they're holding them all like hostage and like away, like in a prison or something. And you can kind of create Magneto's origins based off of that idea that they're, you know, trying to keep these people locked up and locked away from the rest of the world or whatever. And, you know, something, a spin on that would kind of work for Magneto's uh, storyline, which like, I, I guess that kind of does work. Um, Cause like they, they, they need to find a way, they need to find a way to bring Magneto and update him uh, to this time. How would you feel if oh. they did something along the lines of just like kind of copied the storyline, but brought it forward in time. So he's, I don't know, caught in Afghanistan. He's a fucking, you know, or something like that. Like, you know, where you could like right. li link it in with like Tony Stark or something at the, at the start of Iron Man or something like that. You know, maybe he was captured. He's a, uh, a prisoner of war or something like that. And then, you know, it's just slightly mm. different. Like, would you think that it'd be good, or do we need the Holocaust? Like, because I know you've expressed, uh -huh. you've expressed in the past that that's such a key key part that they would nearly need to it, go back. You know. Yeah, I mean, it it is a definitely a, a key part, but at the same time, I think that when when they did Spider Man Homecoming, they started at a point where he was already Spider Man. Yeah. You know, and and of course, like we didn't really get. You know, the origin story pulled up. We don't know why Uncle Ben was gone and whatnot. And like, as it turns out, like, you know, Aunt May became the Uncle Ben of of, of that universe. And so, I mean, you know, it would be interesting to just have Magneto already to have like been through that Holocaust situation. And this is just the more modern version of like later in the years. Like he's he's been around. It's just his brotherhood has been so underground that, you know, you, you never hear about them. Um, because, he, you know, he was amassing the army and trying to get things like moving together. And, you know, the same thing with the X-Men, you know, maybe they were just so secluded and trying to amass their children that, you know, eventually they they get found out, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it, yeah, it, it, I don't think we need to ahead. see the Holocaust scenes like dead on, but it's more so in the timeline that I think is like what it kind of affects. Right. Mm -hmm. Where, um, you know, the Holocaust happening like in the 40s, right, the early 40s. And how do you bring that to 2020? You know, that's such a huge gap of time that now Magneto's in a different age space. So I think what Fento is alluding to does work. And the important part is Magneto being persecuted and his family being killed uh, by a state entity for being different, right? For being the others. Mm -hmm. um, and that is what creates his like sense of hatred for the humans because they killed his parents and the distrust for in the institutions um, when they're like, you know, you're a group of other people that that group should inherently mm -hmm. just distrust everyone yeah. except themselves. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you could find that, like, yes. And there's certainly cases like that, especially in recent, um, <laughs> uh, recent world life uh, that, you know, it definitely would work, but it's like, does Disney want to uh, do that or not? Do they have, That'd be a the balls bold. to do that. Yeah, that'd be a ball. Yeah. Like, so if you make it like as if he's from like Ukraine or something, you know, from the Ukraine, yeah. from China, Oof, yeah. like there, there's a lot of things going on right now. Yeah, and there has been in the last forty years that they could definitely do. Um, it's just you know what what is Disney willing to do? Uh, because I guess like everyone universally hates Nazis. Uh, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's a safe one for them. You know, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's, yeah. it's it was a lot. It was long enough ago that. You're not going to be hurting anybody's feelings <laughs> by bringing it up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I would say uh, another solution is to just add uh, an, an ability or an innate ability to the, like, Professor X and um, and Magneto and just say that, like, because of their mutant powers, their longevity was increased. So they're slightly, like, like they still age quite well, like, but they're, they're not, like, uh, Wolverine status where he can be like 300 years old, but he's, they just age a little bit slower. And then that just makes, it's kind of like with, with captain Steve Rogers, like he can go through the years and he has higher longevity because he's a, an ultimate, like healthy person. Yeah. Like Steve Rogers, you know, he was frozen. He was like, it was a big deal of his storyline that he went down and was frozen. Like the original captain America comic books, he aged out of being Captain America. He just got old and was like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. And then when they wanted to reintroduce him into the Marvel Universe, they retconned his character to have, you know, 
die, go into the ocean and get frozen for 50 years. Um, do they want to do that with Magneto? Sure, make me make me that story where they send him into outer space or something for 50 years and bring him back. Yeah, you just got to you got to make the story. And it's like, how do they make that jump? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, it's a tough one. You know, how do you explain Magneto going into space in like the 50s and then coming back like 60 years later? It's like, oh, he, he went through a wormhole or something and, you know, came yeah. back unaged. It doesn't really make sense, you know. Yeah, and they can do this yeah. stuff. It's just like they have to, they have to do this stuff, you know. Like, yeah. And that's that's where my concern is: how many times can you go back to that well? Because they're going to have to explain the Fantastic Four too. So how many times do you get to dip back into this well? Where like you know they, mm-hmm. oh, here's a reason why they're from this time period and they're actually here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. True. Guys, I have to bring up a topic that we haven't spoke about yet. We are almost an hour into the cast, and I can't believe we haven't spoke about it yet, but Thor trailer. Oh, my sweet oh, child. Man. Oh, sweet child of mine. <laughs> <laughs> so good, bro. Bro, it's incredible. I was just blown away by it, and I got to throw it uh, a little throwback to our previous episode of the podcast, but we were speaking about it, and I mentioned on that cast, it's like, it's going to drop tomorrow, and boom, <laughs> it dropped that next day. I was just like, we predict these things. But yeah, no. I, I'm shocked terrible. it came out. I was totally expecting it as the trailer at the end of, Multiverse of Madness, like they did um, Multiverse of Madness at the end of Spider Man. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, was, I hope uh, they don't get into that habit because I, I, you know, we 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 spoke about this. You know, it's like it's a wasted opportunity for an after credit scene. Like the after credit scenes are iconic at this stage. Like we, you mm-hmm. need to have them in there. You can't be thrown in a trailer. Like you know, it's not 2012 anymore. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. But like, I, I just love how quickly people just meme the the trailer as well. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure you've seen all those memes where you see Chris Pratt looking at the Guardians. Yeah. And then yeah. Yeah. Thor. Yeah. He just comes into frame. <laughs> that was, yeah. That made me laugh, dude. That was so funny. I don't know. Do you want to troll the trailer? We could kind of watch it and react to it together. But maybe put the volume at like 10 percent just so <laughs> we don't get absolutely <laughs> guns and roses out of our head. Um, uh, this is one of my favorite trailers I think I've ever seen. This is right up there with like the Suicide Squad trailer uh, from the first one released. Like this is just a fun trailer from front to back. Yeah, it's um, incredible. The, it just, God, it opens up uh, with the young Thor running through. Who? It's actually Chris His Hemsworth's son. kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just so hilarious. Good. Fantastic. What a great way to get one of your kids in and just like immortalize that moment, that like that time in his life. Do you know what I mean? Yep. He'll be he'll be twenty and he'd be going like you know he'd be showing off to his friends like look I was in Thor four like you know I know <laughs> yeah so cool right. I'd, I'd be doing shit like that if I was famous and I had kids like you know oh, it's yeah. like put them in there oh. and you know kind of get that stamp in their life that time just like boxed off forever yeah um so we're gonna try to play this in four K oh don't and do that. so don't do that <laughs> that's not gonna work <laughs> that's not gonna are work. you sure I I I can guarantee you that will not work. <laughs> You don't know the power of my computer. <laughs> I know the power of mine. <laughs> and I know the power of Discord. <laughs> that's, that's a great, that's a, that's that's a great pause right there. Oh, yeah, that is a great pause. And that's his kid? That's his kid, yeah. yeah that's one of his kids. It's one of his sons. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, and I love the t- the um, the teenage version of him, the next version of him that we see. He's got, like, the iconic kind of 60s helmet and everything like that he's got the helmet with the wings and everything that that is that is marvel like that is 1960s marvel right there like you know it's 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 fucking brilliant yeah so like even i'm like we're four seconds into the trailer or sorry we're literally two seconds into the trailer i'm like this is fucking amazing already like you know taika (laughs) taika watiti fucking gets it bro he really he really gets it yeah and that's like tour one oh and he's walking through this such a Thanos moment, this isn't it? It's like a, a mirror of the mm. Thanos moment. Mm. So a lot of people are I saying mean, that this is going to be the end. This is the end of the movie. Apparently, a lot, a lot of people are saying. No way! Really? Is that mm-hmm. is that good on the volume? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, right, we'll, I love we'll, this we'll, we'll be talking over it. I think we'll be fine. The Ravager <laughs> Ravager tour is just incredible, dude. <laughs> so good. Amazing. It's like when he turns around, we're like, where do you think he's going? I think that's him quitting. And then the end of, like, the end of the movie is going to be him like kind of reflecting on his time at the end. I, I, I really think this could be his last movie. I, I hope I'm wrong, though. I hope I'm wrong. I mean, he's, oh, he's he talked too. about wanting to be in the MCU for a long time. 
Yeah. Yeah. Like, and I, Ragnarok really, like, kind of revitalized him in it. I, I, I hope I'm wrong. I really do. Well, well and, and it's like with Iron Man, like, people love Thor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not Chris Pratt, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I love the art style and everything. It's just so incredible. Yeah. What did we oh, think it is? Man, I love Amazing. it. Amazing. I yeah. can't wait. Incredible. Incredible. Like, I see. If you want to go, uh, will you go back just a minute and just try and pause it on where it's... Yeah, yeah just there if you can try and pause it on um chris hemsworth's reaction to seeing her because i saw a lot of people talk about this look at those like aliens or something in the background there some people were like kind of saying oh my god is that like symbiotes or something oh uh, no, that, well, that's a uh, pretty... the symbi- you know, the, the, the symbiote is in the mcu now think about it they're, they're yeah. not symbiotes they're, they're they're monsters of gore i forget what exactly yeah. they're called but like the, the the sword that Gore has in this movie, it is based on a symbiote. Mm. Um, it used to be Noel's weapon. Yes, um, yes. And these perfect. monsters are 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 in the comic book, and so like they're kind of symbiote like, but they're not. They're they're full on, you know, kind of just monsters who are all black. How yeah. how good is this costume right here as well? Oh, it's oh, fantastic. beautiful. Proper Viking style, like with the fur and everything. It looks amazing. Like he just mm-hmm. like. In this trailer, there's like four different like costumes that he's going to be wearing, like, and he just looks amazing in them all. It's incredible. Yeah. Did Did one of you guys mention that the like? Uh, did you guys like the um those disc things that were in his costume like originally, or yeah. was was or is it that one of you didn't like it? I I forgot if he did or didn't. I like it. I like, I like it. his OG costume. I I um, I I like the costume where you know where he's like has Stormbreaker sitting beside him and it's like projecting out the rainbow bridge or whatever. Um yeah. that suit is really cool. Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, and and like you could see like the suit kind of lighting up too with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I think that's sweet, bro. This yeah, is probably just, like, this one on screen right now is probably my favorite though. I think this is you said, badass looking. You said yeah, Rune King Thor hopping? Yeah, I'm pretty sure like when they have the gold on him, that's his like Rune King Thor outfit. And then, like, when he kind of, like, powers up whatever, he's supposed to have, like, golden arms. Like, how he usually has uh, metal arms or whatever, like, silver on his armor. He has gold ones instead. Nice. Mm. Uh, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but, like, the Warriors 3 are gone, right? Like, they're oh, no yeah. longer with us. Dead. Hella, hella fucking <sighs> wipe them out, right? Mm-hmm. I, that's That was such, like, a big, like, sad point for me. Like, I really wish they didn't do that, because the Warriors 3 is such a cool group. They are. And, and... And I know that that you know Thor is with the with the Guardians of the Galaxy in this movie, but it, like it's just that would have been cool to see the Warriors three helping along, like having adventures and saying, "Oh, we've just been often like helping Asgard, new Asgard," you know. Mm. Yeah. Well, get ready because your boy Taika is about to just murder the entire Olympus. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah. <laughs> Olympus looks great. I think Zeus. I it- think Zeus looks real cheesy though. Yes. Like the lightning um, bolts look so uh, fake and stuff. Like it's but, just, but, but I, I love, love it. Yeah, yeah, there's something about it. I know, it, I know, I know. <laughs> I know. I think we're gonna be in like a kind of eighties mode sort of like watching this, so I think it's yeah. gonna it's gonna it's gonna hit like eighties kind of T V, I think, or something like you know, I think it'll it'll yeah. work. It's it's gonna work. It's gonna but, work, of course. Yeah. The the way they've designed these Thor movies, you can turn up the cheese factor and it's gonna be just fine. Yeah. It's so good. Like, e- even if you laugh, like, it's for a good reason. Mm-hmm. Facts. Facts. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm very curious about what's going to happen in terms of, like, the story and, like, how everything lines up from this trailer to the movie. Uh, because you see when they're going, like, to Zeus and stuff, he's walking with, like, four people. He's on this boat with four people. So this, like, part where he comes back to New Asgard there and sees Jane. Yeah. It kind of feels like that is earlier in the movie and... um. I you think, know, them going to see Zeus is like the second act or something. I think if um mm-hmm. the part where Jane has the hammer, I think that's Earth because I think if you look behind mm-hmm. her, there's a car. There's a car behind her. Yeah, that's definitely Earth they're on. That, yeah. I, I think they're going to be a new Asgard there. Yeah, there's cars there, so yeah, new Asgard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I would. I would definitely think that's new Asgard. Um, I don't know. It's, it's interesting how it's going to play out because uh, you know, we know the scene from the comic book uh, that everyone's like pointing out. 
where he sees the big gigantic like frost rat a skeleton that's oh, dead. Yeah. Yeah. Um who, you know, that's kind of like in the comic book, that's kind of like a turning point where like uh Thor realizes Literally. how serious everything is with like Gore's back, you know? Yeah. There yeah. it is. Yeah. So yeah, like in the comic crazy. book, of course, this is Thor by himself. Um and this, you know, this is like a champion. Like this is somebody who uh would eat black holes for fun, you know, <laughs> like you would wrestle black holes mm-hmm. for fun. Um, so, uh, this is where like Thor realizes that Gore is back, uh, cause Gore or th- because Thor and Gore used to, they fought each other when Thor was like really young, or, like, you know, back in before he even had Molnir. Yeah. Um, and this is when he realizes he's back and I, I feel like he goes to new Asgard after seeing this and then they go see Zeus. Yeah. And do you think, Gore, oh man, there's Gore's, somebody, do you think Gore is going to completely wipe out Olympus? Like Gonzo? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, murder him. <laughs> I I feel like I feel like at least one god is gonna gonna remain alive. And but that's that's the cool thing. It's like I'm I'm also speculating like what other gods and goddesses are we gonna see in Olymp in Olympus? Like are we gonna see just Zeus? Are we gonna see like Zeus and like a demigod like Hercules? Or are we gonna see like you know the sun god? Are we gonna see Helios, uh Hera? Are we gonna see everyone or are we just gonna see like Zeus and a couple people? Uh, I don't know. I think if we, um, when you, when you're looking at the zoo scene, it looks like there's a couple of different gods yeah. sitting next to him a little bit. Like that could definitely be like an Aphrodite's, or maybe that's just girls who are, you know, he's banging. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I want to see like a, a kind of square off between like Chris Hemsworth and whoever they cast as Hercules in the MCU. I think that'd be really fucking yes. cool. Yes. Yeah. That would be so cool. Yeah. God, look at that lightning I- bolt. How good is it? It's so good. It I looks, love it. I, it looks I hope, awful, bro. <laughs> I, to be honest, to, to be honest, I hope it's just a prop that lights up. And it's just like, yeah. but he actually uses real bolts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I pray he has real bolts. Like, <laughs> but he looks chunky. Like, you know, this is gonna be like retired, like old school. Like, you know, he's he's done his time. He's not on the battlefield anymore. Like, you know. <laughs> well, well, usually, usually, like the like the all father types, they they tend to be a little more chunky, right? Because they're like fruitful and they're happy and yeah prosperous wasn't it that's i love modern day russell crowe yeah he's he's a he's a vibe for sure dude absolute vibe oh man this is this is gonna be one hell of a movie yeah and i just oh man i'm such a fan of the thor god of thunder run in the comics that i really hope um they do use a bit more than just having gore as a villain like I would like to see Gore uh, and Thor like squaring off when Thor was really young. I would like to see them at the end when like Thor is like the last of the Asgardian gods alive. Like those scenes are so fucking good. Uh, that I, I hope they bring those into it. It's just not like, you know, just this narrow uh, timeline for Thor. It Like the, the amount of the, uh, sorry, my head's spinning because like, as I hear you say Thor and Gore, I'm like, is, is Korg going to talk to Thor and talk to Thor, like Korg about, you know, <laughs> about the times he went with Gore and then Thor and Gore were hanging out and then Korg was, talk- you know, it's, just, it's, bug- <laughs> it's, it's in a loop. Yeah. It's, it's a little tongue twisty. Um, yeah. I'm excited though. Uh, you know, a lot of speculation on Gore's origins uh, in the MCU is going to be based on the Eternals. Uh, you know, they, they did the eternal said they destroyed celestial six, I believe it was. Yeah. And people are like it. saying like, they're going to tie that into, uh, to Gore's origin story. Like Isn't that his home planet. Was. It's a, his I, home planet. Was, I think it is. Yeah. was the birthplace of a celestial. So that's why he's like on this vengeful quest or whatever, going around killing all the gods. I, I, I love yeah. it. I love it, dude. I love it. If they could tie eternals into Thor four, I think that's really cool because, Eternals just really f- still feels just like a one shot its own thing like you know it's it doesn't feel like it connects to anything else at all and it feels like we're at a place where it's not possible for it to connect to anything like the closest thing that we're going to get is like Black Knight or something coming into right. Moon Knight or something you know so if they can do that in in space I think yes that'd be great Yeah cuz the only the only thing that Eternals has on it in addition to you know the the Black Knight is Thanos and Star Fox and Pip. And that's pretty much it. If they're like, because of the way the the movie did, uh, you know, it's it was okay. Um, 
I don't know how how much further they're going to go from there or how long it's going to take before we actually see a sequel. Uh, I mean, you know, I think it made money and it's not like the Eternals or it's not like the MCU hasn't had a soft opening on something before and then went with it. Like, I, I think the, the original Thors didn't do terribly well and they still built it. So hopefully they do, because I do like the Eternals. It's just mm-hmm. like, you know, they, they can definitely do more with the story like than what they did, I felt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, I'm going to rattle off a few other bits of news from the week. Um, Ezra Miller <laughs> arrested again. Oh, my God. He's got to be, be done, right? He's got to be done. How does, this kid, how does this kid not just sit the fuck on his hands and not do anything? Like... How do you fuck up this bad in in a, like a month period? Did you hear what he did? No. He was to, he was told he was like drunk and rowdy at a party in Hawaii, and he was told to leave. And he picked up a chair and threw it at a woman and hit her in the head, and like she had a big gash on her head. Like, oh my god, Jesus fucking Christ! Like, you know what I mean? Like, the dude is screaming for help like he really he really is like like you know i i i can hand on heart i've never really been in trouble with the law like but i know if i was if something happened to me where you know i was drunk and disorderly and i got arrested or something i would lay low for a year i wouldn't fuck you know i wouldn't be out doing shit this guy's getting arrested and the next day he's hammered at a fucking another event just causing ructions it's crazy Mm -hmm. bro he's it the dude needs help. Like, I, I feel so sorry for him in a sense, like, because it's like, these are, these are cries for help, like at this stage. And like, I don't know. I'm like, you know, I, we all know I'm a big DC fan and I'm just, <laughs> I'm just so afraid of what's going to happen now. Like, you know, it's like, are they going to release this flash movie and then turf, like turf them out, like straight after, like, you know, they've, they've openly said they've paused any future plans they have with them. So it's like, you know, what he like, needs to do is start acting like a fucking idiot at a real bar. <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> please fuck around in some real places, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like it's oh, it's crazy, dude. It's crazy. I never wish harm on anybody, but like he strikes me as somebody who needs to get slapped around just to kind of learn a lesson, like get put in his place. And I would mm-hmm. I, I, I never want to like condone violence on anybody, but like he's acting like a fucking Phil and he needs to be put in his place now at this stage. You know, if he's yeah. not gonna, if he's, if he's not gonna get help himself, he needs to be, he needs to be really put in his place. Oh um, yeah, because, because, because you know, DC's really trying to get this this thing moving. You know, they're trying to get their their comic movies, you know, pushing forward. And some of the cast members that they've chosen so far, like some of them have had you know controversies, and it's not it's not looking good. And I know that shouldn't that shouldn't really reflect on DC movies, but to the majority of the population, you know, drama means everything. Absolutely. You should look at what's happening with Johnny Depp. Like, you know what I mean? Like, his personal life has spilled into, you know, the Harry Potter franchise. And, you know, there was talks about potentially bringing him back for parts of the Caribbean. And he's like, absolutely not. And, you know, <laughs> it's all, all this stuff is, is affecting the movie world as well. Like, you know, so like you know, with social media and everything that's going on, like, you know, we're, we're so heavily invested in people's actual lives it's it's crazy like we didn't have that 20 years ago like you know no, mm-hmm. no one gave a shit what actors were up to bro this Johnny Depp trial has been some of the funniest clips oh, I've seen so in my entire good. life I know bro I feel so good I feel so sorry for Johnny like you know I don't know I saw the clip where he's getting asked the same question like four times and it's just like this lawyer this lawyer is a fucking clown you know yep. it's like he's a clown <laughs> he's an absolute clown and they're trying I think they're trying to get Johnny to snap or something I think they're trying to actually get him to like react um, yeah, and it's because they have nothing on him. Exactly, like they, they, they exactly. only have his low point, and that's it. Like nothing more. Did you hear she? There was a clip. I, I haven't been watching it live or anything, but I, I saw a video of a clip that she put up where she testified that she was carrying around a like concealer, like of some makeup, um, because she was saying she was always covered in bruises, and the company came out and said. <laughs> We, it's impossible you couldn't have been using this stuff because this stuff wasn't it hadn't been invented yet <laughs> <laughs> Jesus bro like come on <sighs> if you're if you're gonna put something into a trial like make sure you do your actual fucking research and put your you know do background checks and everything make sure everything that you're saying is lining up crazy yeah. crazy well, 
And then, like, the, j- just as you mentioned that, like, with Amber Heard, isn't Amber Heard supposed to be in, like, Aquaman 2? And they, I think they that's, adamantly said that they're just going to keep her in there, yeah, right? Yeah, that's coming out in December, and she's in it, like, you know? I'm not going to see it. I can't support her I, after I, what she's done to my boy Johnny. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think, like, yeah, I would, I would, I don't know. Again, I don't want to, like, pray for a boycott or anything like that, but, you know, because that just hurts Jason Momoa and everybody else in the movie. But yeah. uh, at the same time, it's, you know, it's it's very unfair that she's being allowed to continue to work for Warner Brothers when Johnny isn't. It's ridiculous, like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, once 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 the truth actually started coming out, it, it that's when, you know, they took a step back and they're like, oh, geez, maybe we've been looking at this on the wrong side. And so, you know, I guess they're just trying, like, I guess with Warner Brothers, they're just trying to say, like, you know, we're going to keep moving forward. But, you know, afterwards, like, they could just cut ties with her. They could just be like, you know, whatever. We don't care. Like, uh, you did your movie. Get out. Yeah, I think I think she'll be gone after this movie. <clears throat> and they'll just recast, I think. You know, they're they're not afraid. DC are not afraid to recast. So mm-hmm. they'll just re- they'll recast after this movie, I think. I'd be, yeah. sh- I'd be shocked. To s- I'd be shocked to see her go into, like, a Justice League or a... Uh, like Aquaman 3 or something like that. Uh, I'd be shocked. Same with Ezra. I think he's gone after this Flash movie. I think there's gonna they're going to do something with the Speed Force and then, you know, we'll have a different actor to show up. Like, hopefully Grant Gustin, like, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, well, like, even, even then, I felt, like, I always felt like Ezra Miller didn't really captivate me as, you know, the Flash, especially, like, I didn't watch the Snyder Cut yet. I'm st- like, I'm still based on the original cut. Um, but I just... I didn't like his his character. Mm-hmm. Like I couldn't really get into it, and I felt it was it, he he didn't fit the role. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure, absolutely. A uh, tiny bit of Star Wars news for us. Um, apparently, Hayden Christensen did an interview during the week and mentioned that he's been binge watching the Clone Wars in preparation for probably not Obi Wan, but I'd say in preparation for the Ahsoka show. You think so? Well, he's he's confirmed to be in Ahsoka, so yeah. Oh, is he? I didn't know that. Yeah, no, he is. Yeah, hundred mm-hmm. percent. Oh man, crazy, bro. So I'm I've that would tell me that there's going to be flashbacks to the Clone Wars because he needs to get into that version of Anakin's kind of mindset and character. Yeah, um, that excites me a lot, a lot. I I also think it's amazing that you know an, an actor has to binge watch a show just to get information. <laughs> well, like, he's uh, he's probably he's probably never watched it before. I'd be yeah. sh- like I'd say he's seen bits, but there's no way he sat down and watched the show. Like, I I, I don't think yeah. so. I really don't. Just the so. thought of like, just the thought though of like, oh man, now I got homework. Yeah. <laughs> I think Disney have a really cool thing. Um, I don't know if you've seen it. If you go into the Star Wars section, but they have a really cool thing where they show you the most important episodes of Clone Wars, and you can kind of skip all the bullshit. But they have episodes, they have like different categories. So they have like the most, the key episodes or something, I think it's called. And then they have like Ahsoka's essential episodes and so on. So they, that's what you want to watch. So if there's anyone in the chat or listening to us that hasn't seen Clone Wars, get onto Disney Plus and you can just actually watch all of the key episodes in a row. And that, that, that'd that be it. <coughs> um, question in the chat there, sorry, just to uh, step off. Who's your favorite Spider-Man? <sighs> that's a very tough question for me to answer i'm a massive massive spider-man fan um i need to think for a minute guys you if you want to answer the question who's your favorite Spider-Man? starless spider i don't know if they mean in the, if, if they mean in the movies maybe or just oh. all like hey, that's fine scarlet spider is a is a fine answer mm-hmm. he's just so helpless <laughs> <laughs> he, he has no confidence i love it <laughs> Uh, I mean, if we're talking, if we are talking movies, I would say Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man was by far my favorite. And I I really hope that uh, if they do decide to go with him for, for another movie, um, that they do it correctly. Because, you know, as we've seen in No Way Home, it was like he's like he is a fantastic Spider-Man. He's also a fantastic Peter Parker. Like you believe him. Yeah. And his acting is just out of this world. I gotta say as well, um, you know, I'm seeing a lot of TikToks going up lately of like people who are like cutting up all like these like incredible scenes and just like making them look beautiful with editing and stuff. But like, it's his second movie. I know it. It was a bad movie. Look, I know this. We all know it was a bad movie. But 
all of like the Spider-Man scenes in it are the best that we've ever had. You know, like CGI wise and special effects and like, the web swinging and stuff like that. Like and him flipping over the electricity and stuff. It's incredible. It's unmatched. Like it's 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 mind blowing. Andrew Garfield mm-hmm. like should be very proud of all that. Like you know, I know he had nothing to do with any of that, but you know. Absolutely. So I, I, I think, yeah, I think Andrew Garfield is probably the best Peter. He's the best Spider-Man. Um, I love his costume as well. It's very accurate to the comics and so on. Uh, but mm. I, I love them all. And I know it's 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 a terrible answer, but I do. I love them all. I love I, gr- I grew up with Toby. <laughs> Toby's my first Spider-Man. I have a signed picture of Toby Maguire right behind my monitor here. I look at it every day, like signed, signed by fucking Stan Lee. So, like, Toby is so important to me, but... And I love Tom Holland, you know? The MCU is great, and I think it was, a, it was a very cool story that they told, and I just love how they ended it with No Way Home. It was incredible, like, so... Mm-hmm. I love them all. Really I'd do. say Garfield's the best one for me, too. And one of the thing that really sells it to me is, like, when he's just in a suit standing around, he's the only one that, like, feels like he has the physique of Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Like, he just feels, like, linky for some reason. Like, the way he walks and stuff, <laughs> he, like, embodies it. I don't, I don't know. It's so weird. Yeah, and I think that's down to just true passion, you know. Um, he's been like he grew he, like us. Like I think he's he's close in age to some of us, and grew up with the Toby movies as well, and was just you know it was his goal. He always wanted to be Spider Man, and I think when he got the chance to do it, he just put everything into it, you know. And it, it shows. Mm-hmm. It shows. I agree. Yeah. Um, small bit more just to kind of bounce back to Star Wars, but. Uh, they announced during the week that Andor season two is to begin filming in November, right? Season one hasn't even aired yet, but they're already starting season two. And it's going to be shooting for 18 months. What? 18 months. <laughs> yes. So that tells me that they are probably going to shoot two seasons back to back. Um, but mm. they have got some confidence in this show. They've already pretty much greenlit three seasons. And, you know, I've just, I've been listening and watching some videos and content on it. And, you know, we've already confirmed Obi-Wan Kenobi will be, will be appearing in this show, uh, Ewan McGregor. And I think what a lot of people are predicting is because the timeline would fit so well, we're going to have obviously more Vader in the show. We could potentially have Palpatine in the show because it's like the rise of the Empire. We could have Thrawn in the show. Like, it makes sense if you're going to bring all these characters in because that that timeline in Star Wars is just so rich for content, mm-hmm. so rich for storytelling that I think they need, like, three seasons of this show, but it's crazy. 18 months they're going to be shooting for, starting in November. Well, Wild. Well, that makes me wonder, That makes me wonder though, like, who did they bring it to to <laughs> be, to, like, really get the critics' idea on to whether or not they want a green light the next few seasons you know usually you green light for another season when you know the first season is doing well yeah you know when when ratings are ratings are showing that they're pretty high and that that people love this that's when they start green lighting for more and more seasons so i've, I've never seen I've, I've never seen anything like this before where yeah. they're already green lighting another season before we even get to see the first one i know netflix did it with cobra kai they green lit like two seasons in a row before they haven't even filmed it but again there was three seasons of the show already out you know so yeah and mm-hmm. they had they had the, the the data to go back on and say like you know we know season one was great season two was even better blah 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 so it's like yeah let's just keep going but yeah you're right like i don't know if they've like finished filming this season maybe they're in the editing mode and they've shown screeners and stuff and it's absolutely it must be popping off uh with with the 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 execs in marvel or in sorry in disney and in like lucas like it must be it must be the best shit that they've ever made because if they're committing so much so to the fact that they're going this far forward with it it has to be straight fire has to be yeah so i am so fucking excited like they need to i I think they'll do this at celebration they'll release probably the first trailer for this show at celebration and we'll probably get uh, an announcement date like you know wh- when it's going to air and i think it's going to be soon i think it, it'll be like before mando season three anyway i think i really think mm-hmm. yeah i'm pumped i mean you know they they star wars seems to be the only thing disney has confidence in doing multiple seasons of like nothing in the mcu has gotten a season two yet or even confirmed right like I, i'm not even loki. sure that loki's confirmed for it, it loki's confirmed mm-hmm. it is yeah it's confirmed for season yep. two yeah 
Never mind. I'll go fuck myself. <laughs> <laughs> I think but the, the way that Marvel have done all their content, like I think a lot of them have been kind of made and just kind of the vision has been one season, you know? Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't think there's ever been in a thought that they would do Hawkeye season two. You know, I think it's going to just step into Echo, you know, and that's going to be the continuation of that story. Um, gotcha. And then obviously Multiverse of Madness is the continuation of Wanda's story. Now, whatever happens at the end of that, I think if we leave that movie and, you know, Wanda goes off into the distance as the new big bad of the MCU, I'd be very interested to see a second season of WandaVision then if that was the case, you know? Yeah. Because it's like, <laughs> no one's mentioned Vision at all. Like, where's Vision? Where's White Vision? <laughs> you know? Yeah. No well, one gives I, a fuck. I- I think there have been rumors uh, that White Vision is going to show up in uh, Multiverse of Madness. It w- that would make sense. So, yeah, yeah to try to calm and try to calm Wanda down. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, hope mm-hmm. she kills him. Yeah. Oh That'd man, just wonder kill just, just like just the, no, just does the exact same thing where she just like goes into his brain <laughs> from yeah. there and pulls out nothing. Yeah, uh, I think. I wonder Wanda- if this. I'm sorry. I was going no, back go. to Andor. No, no, please go back to Andor. <laughs> Um, do you remember how like George Lucas had a uh, pretty mapped out production of a TV show that got canceled? Um, I wonder if Andor is kind of like a continuation of a lot of those stories and why they feel comfortable go ahead on it because like they already got a lot of the stories like kind of seeded. Yeah, yeah, I, I would hope so. I would hope so. Because I, I don't know if you've seen footage from his canceled TV show, but it looked amazing, bro. Like it was just it was so far ahead of his time. You know, mm-hmm. it was like they, it was going to cost like a million dollars an episode. And at the time, they're like, we can't do this. And now on a streaming service, so like a million an episode, please yeah. have two. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Take 10, 10, yeah. per, fucking 100 <laughs> per episode nearly. Um, yeah, like, I, you know, there's been rumors that, you know, George is kind of dipping his toe back in. You know, he's he's been consulting on Mando and consulting on Ahsoka and can. I think he, rumor has it, he could even be down as like an executive producer on Andor. So yeah. I think I think you're right. I think you're right. I think this could be a kind of brainchild of George's that's just expanded out. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that excites mean, me, bro. Yeah, and you shouldn't you shouldn't just keep George Lucas completely out of it. You know, I mean, if he wants to come back and and put his hand in the jar. I think that'd be fun. Like give his give his perspective on, on what he thinks should be pushing forward in the storylines. And um I, I just w- I wanted to go back to to that speculation like with the George Lucas show Hoffman, do you have do you have a synopsis of like what it was supposed to be about? Um it was going to be set on Coruscant. It was going to deal with like the kind of underworld of Coruscant and bounty hunters and stuff and you know the the kind of neon districts of it, the under I think it was called Underworld if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. Oh, nice, yeah. And so, in terms of synopsis about like a main character and stuff, I don't know, uh, but just uh, that—that's kind of the gist of it. And there's some test footage out there from what they did, and it kind of looks, you know, a little bit like you know the uh, prequel because it was it was fully 3D or whatever. Um, and he was he was he was, not, he was down for it, man. He was going to make this amazing TV series. Epic. What an yeah. animator. Because I but, know I know uh, I know George really, and I know George was heavily involved in clone wars but clone wars was a yeah. complete passion project of his like that was that was what he yeah. wanted to do you know and he helped dave filoni a lot with that so like you know when you're watching clone wars you're like this is george is like this is what george wanted like so if he can come back and start doing more stuff like that like jesus like that's what star yeah. wars needs yeah. that's what it needs it needs the yeah the the maker the it creator needs, exactly it needs the visions of the creator yeah, I got some footage uh, from this thing. Let me get it set up here. Fuck yeah, dude! Please, I'd love to see Ooh. it. I can't believe you've never seen this, Vento. Um, maybe I have. I, 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 I need to see it. I don't know. How do you feel about Thanos <laughs> snapped? When Thanos snapped, oh, yeah. it was one of my favorite moments in the MCU. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Hmm. I, I particularly like like the snap. I, th- I thought it was uh, very interesting how they actually showed, you know that the heroes lost for I, once yeah i didn't think the snap would actually happen so i was shocked when it happened because i was like oh my god they're actually doing it and then like half the universe <laughs> gets wiped and just yeah that scene with steve trying to pull like at the end trying to stop thanos and all jesus Whew. 
Incredible. Here we go. All right, here's the underworld. Like, this is going to be a TV show. Holy. That looks good. And there's like, this test footage, it's not even like an episode. Legs. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this is kind of like going to be like Andor's vibe where it's like kind of, you know, this the senior parts of Star Wars. Yeah. While they're getting the rebellion started, you know, you know they got to work mm -hmm. on like the back streets and the underbelly. This is like the, the is this the ground of Corazon? Is it? Is that? Yeah. Because I know George did talk a lot about wanting to explore the ground and he said he just, they just couldn't do it in the movies. Yep. Yeah, this Coruscant, the, uh, it's called Underworld. Yeah. Under the clouds, like. Hello. Well, it would have been a nice change of pace because, like, you know, we need to get out of Tatooine. Well, like, this, this kind of does feel like Rogue One. Like, you know, there's the points in Rogue One and in Solo where, like, you meet Andor and stuff like that. Like, you know, it, it this feels like that, you know? So yeah. this makes a lot of sense that it, this would be a continuation of it. Mm-hmm. Anytime I see that, that type of robe, I'm assuming it's a Jedi. Yeah, I know. I'm like, is she a Jedi? Right. What's going on here? Like, you're, you're, being, you're being very ballsy walking around in the Star Wars universe dressed like that. So that's all I'll say. <laughs> yeah. So I, I definitely hope that uh, Andor has vibes from George Lucas, man. Like, I, you know, Rogue One is like one of my favorite Star Wars movies. And so if they bring George Lucas along to give them ideas on it. Uh, I'm in. Yeah. Yeah, it looks cool, bro. It's all green screen. Of course. You know, one of the things I liked about that scene, just the, like that firefight, was the fact that they had a different type of weapon shooting back at them. Like, it wasn't just, you know, blasters. Like, the dude had, like, he had to crank up something just to just to take a shot, and it was like a shotgun almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool, bro. I'm, 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 I'm all for that sort of stuff. Like, you know, um, I think, like, you know, we've... We've cut like you know we've come to accept the fact that you know the likes of Mando and stuff like that like stuff stepping away from the Jedi works you know and, and yeah I think I think that would be a big hit absolutely. Mm -hmm. When's Andor? Do they got like a release date or do you think they're gonna announce that a celebration? Celebration, I think we'll get we'll get the first trailer and we'll get on a release date. I think and I would be shocked if it wasn't this year. You know I think yeah. it, I think it'll be like September October time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man. I'm just so ready for Star Wars to get rolling again. Like, I'm really hoping that Kenobi works. It gets me, like, doesn't turn me off to Star Wars again, and then everything just keeps, starts rolling, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, just uh, Lulu talking about Stranger Things in the chat here. Um, did you guys see the new trailer for no. Stranger Things Season 4? Mm -hmm. Wild. I actually, really cool. I actually, have, I have actually never watched Stranger Things. Oh, wow. You should definitely watch season one anyway. Season one was incredible. Um, it's just like, it feels like an 80s kind of horror movie. Like, it's just, it's incredible. It's so good. But the fourth season, if I'm being very honest, the show started on such a high. It peaked, I think, in season one. And then it started to kind of gradually go down. But this trailer for season four is fucking wild. It's great. So, yeah, I think um, that'll be something that I'll definitely want to kind of put out a portion of the podcast to talk about just because it, it'll definitely be something that because i think they've confirmed season four will be the end so the story is ending and um, so oh. it'll, it'll be something that i think we'll definitely want to talk about on the cast so okay. i'll definitely know, catch you, up then you have a mission on your hands alex you gotta watch all the all three seasons <laughs> <laughs> and as well they release they release everything on day one it's like you know release day it's like boom 13 episodes or 10 or whatever it is just straight up on netflix so it's mm. a binger absolute binger. just what, like it's so good just what hoffman ordered exactly exactly <laughs> yeah we know how much of a binger hoffman is so oh sure. yeah yeah no you'll love it dude i think you'll you'll fucking fly through season one you'll just you'll fall in love with it straight away i'd be shocked if you didn't but yeah no the oh, i'm excited to watch it then trailer's great trailer's great i can't believe you haven't watched it yeah i've just been busy man <laughs> how dare you how dare you how dare you <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you guys have any news bits you want to bring up? Um, I have been off the internet, so I know nothing. I have one uh, last thing. I have one last thing to bring up, and I'm kind of afraid to bring it up because I know it's going to spiral into a fucking a hate speech. But uh, 
<laughs> Zack Snyder started uh, <laughs> filming Rebel Moon this week. It, production has started. So Rebel Moon, yes. if you don't know, for anyone who may not know, is he pitched this to Lucas to be a Star Wars movie. And they said no, they didn't like it or they didn't like it for Star Wars. And he decided to just go with it. Went to Netflix. They were like, absolutely, yes, let's make this movie. And uh, it's 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 greenlit and it's it's into production now. And they've released a couple of kind of set photos and stuff like that. And it looks great. <clears throat> they got set photos from this though? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can look them up. Let me look that up. Yeah, they, they look really uh, good. I'm very excited for this because I do want to see Zack Snyder do a space opera. I think Star Wars was very correct in saying, no, thank you, sir. I don't think you're a good fit for us. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm excited for it. Yeah, yeah, for Rebel sure. Moon. What's your favorite TV oh. show was asked in the chat. Um, superhero Boba genre, Fett. favorite TV show, <laughs> Boba Fett, how dare you. Favorite TV show <laughs> for me is probably Daredevil, if I'm being very honest. Mm. Nothing, nothing superhero wise nothing has top nothing has topped daredevil uh shows in general like some just to rack off some of the things like definitely like sopranos the wire um breaking bad that sort of stuff like they, those are all just classics game of thrones mm -hmm. um, but superhero shit i think number one on the list for me is daredevil i only just rewatched it over the last couple of weeks and it's just as good as it was in 2015 it's just mm -hmm. the best so far, uh, Moon Knight is becoming the new favorite. Really? And I'm hoping that, yeah, I'm hoping nice. that it lands. Nice, dude. That's cool. Like, you know, that something brand new can come along and just turn into your favorite shit straight away. Like, I think that's amazing. And that's how I felt after watching No Way Home. I was like, this is my new favorite MCU movie. And even on rewatches, yeah, I've, re I've watched the movie three times now and it's, it holds up every single time. Good. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it'll be top three forever. I don't think it. I, well, maybe Secret Wars will come along in 2028 and just fucking blow us all out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you never know. With Multiverse of Madness, you might get you might get a good chunk and be like, wow, this might make in the top five at least. Oh, yeah. I, and I think it will. I think it will. All the cameos, I think, is going to make that movie just so fucking special because it's going to be just a love letter to Marvel fans for the last 20 years. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I heard a rumor that... Uh, or it's just well, it's been a, kind of circulating. I've seen it pop up a bit, so there's people talking about it. But Chris Evans, Hydra Cap, Multiverse of Madness. Yeah, bring it. I think it's so. I'm excited. I think if, yeah, I think it'd be fucking great. I think it'd be great. I think it's the only place you could do it, right? Yeah. That or Secret Wars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I know Hugh Jackman has mentioned that if Secret Wars does happen, he would be interested. That'd be something that he would come back for. Yeah, mm. it'd be fantastic. <sighs> Be incredible <laughs> Woo. Oh, absolutely man. incredible I, I really can't wait for multiverse of madness i i love that we're getting like we're still kind of staying in the mystic arts and that we're getting into the supernaturals and because we've been so cosmic lately that you know it's it's nice to be back on the ground and then back up floating because you know we're yeah. dealing with all this like all these spells and whatnot and the consequences of these spells what it entails for the future you know, I want to I want to know, like, how America Chavez actually, like, integrates into the story. Like, do they just stumble upon each other? Is it like a, you know, because I know that that Wanda, it, I think in the synopsis, you were saying that Wanda is actually looking for America. Yes, to steal her power. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm. I wonder. <laughs> I just <laughs> I just feel like they're going to do a bait and switch with this on Wanda where she's not going to be as bad. Like the the test audiences didn't like Wanda going nuts like that, like just you know destroying everybody. Yeah. And so she's like, they turn her back around. This is the thing, like you know, Feige has openly kind of come out and said, like, look, if any of our big big like reveals get spoiled, they're they're happy to like they have a couple of things shot and they're happy to change it up, you know. So mm -hmm. maybe something released about Wanda being the big bad, and maybe they maybe they've changed it. Like they can change yeah. it last minute. Like you know, they were still shooting stuff only till very recently, so shit could change. Really could. Yeah. Yeah, but the the shock factor would be phenomenal. You know, yeah. it's it's much like when seeing the snap when Thanos actually won and they actually went forward with the comic base of him actually getting rid of half the half the entire population of the universe. You know, that was that was really cool. You see the consequences of that. You see like how, you know, we could we could very well see in Multiverse of Madness how 
even a hero can sometimes turn into a villain. Yeah, I, I, I like. I hope. I really hope that it, she goes full blown dark side because I'd love to see it. It'd be fantastic. And then just you know give her then a, a, a redemption arc, and she kind of comes back to the Avengers then just in time for the next big event or whatever and they don't do it in a big cheesy way like they just brought captain marvel in you know like i'd hate for mm -hmm. i'd hate for it to disappear and then just have to be brought back in like oh hey guys i sorted my shit out like you know i i, <laughs> I, I want to see i want to see her you know struggle and get back to or come to realization that her kids don't exist or whatever they they plan to do um yeah i think that'd be fantastic like fantastic um i just got done watching the uh first one dr strange one Last Ooh, night, I'm gonna rewatch that now. Uh, maybe, so maybe, good. maybe this coming weekend. Yeah, um, yeah. Ju I, yeah. The bit where he crashes the the Lamborghini and his hands just get crushed against the dashboard. Ooh. I was like, I was crying for the Lambo. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't care about his hands. I was just like, no, that beautiful Lamborghini. <laughs> <laughs> we need his hands to get crushed for the show, but still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't have to. Cr you don't have to kill a Lamborghini for it. <laughs> I'm just Dare excited they. for like a more Doctor Strange because this is the funny part. Uh, like Doctor Strange 1 to Doctor Strange 2, there's been three fucking Spider-Man movies, okay? Three Spider-Man movies. That He's is, completed that... his trilogy. Wow. Really? Yes. Wow. So Doctor Strange 1 came out before Homecoming. Yes. That's wild. Yeah. I, thought, I thought Homecoming <laughs> came out and then Strange was the next one after it. Mm -mm. Wow, that's crazy, dude. Like, we need this, bro. Doctor Strange has not got enough love for as good as he's been. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I can't wait to talk about talk about it with Kyle. You know, I, 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 w I would love to hear his his take on it when when it finally drops. Yeah. So I was talking to Kyle during the week, and uh, he's most likely going to be making a return soon, potentially for this movie. So. Yeah, I think we'll get we'll get a conversation with him soon about this. So that's gonna. I know I know he wants so to come good. back for that one because we all know uh, Strange is his favorite. So it'd be great. It'd be cool to have him back for sure. Yeah, Al Crunk, Mister Crunk. Yeah, that'd be great. So uh, I only had one other little piece of news, but it was just that the Echo Show has started filming as well. So that's that's in production at the moment. So mm -hmm. I thought that that would be further along. To be honest, um, mm. so like you know, realistically now that's not going to come out till like probably this time next year at this stage. Um, well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I TV I, shows like have a weird turnaround time, you know? They can, yeah. Mm -hmm. they, especially if you're like on network TV, like network TV. And I was shocked to find this out, but um, you know, I, I was big fan of the Arrow show when it was on, and I followed Stephen Amell like religiously, like and the that show like they were like only like three or maybe four episodes ahead of what was airing on tv so they actually weren't that far ahead so like you know episode four would be on and they'd be shooting episode eight so like they weren't actually that far ahead so you know like network tv definitely i don't know how they do i would say they probably do like if they're shooting like hawkeye for example they probably have jeremy renner on for like a month maybe or something and then mm -hmm. that's it then they're done and then the rest is down to editing and so on so it'd be interesting to see how long they shoot this for. You know, maybe they shoot it for like three or four weeks and then they spend maybe six months editing it. So maybe it'll come out around Christmas time and that'll be like a year after Hawkeye. So maybe that makes sense. Yeah. So we might get it at the end of this year. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. I'd love it. No one's, and, want, no one's uh, talking about She-Hulk, guys. She-Hulk's out in like three uh, months. No one's talking about it. I don't know well, if anything's coming out anymore. Well, I need like an updated Marvel list yeah. from Kevin Feige's mouth. Like, I needed, like, all right, guys, here's the plan. Because I have no idea when anything's going on anymore. Well, like, you have to, like, you're, we're, we have to watch the hype train pass by. Like, as of right now, once we're done with Multiverse of Madness, we have to prepare for um, Miss Marvel. Yes. And, and, it, and as much as, and as much as, like, we see this as, like, a, like, possibly appealing to the kids, I, like, I'm still excited to see a new Marvel character pop up. Yeah, I'm going to watch it, like, but I think it will be, as we've said, this, the target audience for this show is teenagers, so it's it's going to mm -hmm. be a bit of a tougher watch, I think, but it'll still be great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it'll still be great. 
I hope. Just the, the teenager <laughs> relationship stuff. I can't. Ah. Does he like me? Yeah, <laughs> I just, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh my God, oh my he's, God, he's looking go. over here. He's looking over this way. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, yeah, it's so funny, man. I remember being that age, and it's just like you know, like like oh shit, there's a girl looking at me, like you'd be freaking out, like you know. <laughs> but now I'm just like, oh my god, just start killing some people, like you know, I want to see some shit. <laughs> How do they expect me to save the world when we can't even save our friendship? Ah. <laughs> you know what's coming? Yeah, for sure. Um, oh man, guys, if there's nothing else, I think we can break up for the week. Like that was uh, that was fantastic. Uh, I was wondering if I can uh, mention like a movie that's outside of what we usually talk about. Please. Did uh, have you guys been at all interested in watching The Northman? Because I went to go see it. Oh yeah, I am interested in that. I love the Skarsgårds. Like love that whole family of actors. And um, mm. I can't remember the main. What's who's the? Is it what's his name? The main guy the, who's in this one? Alexander. Alexander. Skarsgård. Yeah, I was gonna say Alex. Um, yeah, it looks great, dude. It looks great. Was it good? I thought it was I thought it was great. I thought it was very enjoyable. I think there were a few moments where I was thinking it might have taken a little too long. Mm. But other than that, the to be completely honest, the trailer does not really show much about what actually happens in the movie. So it's oh, one nice. of those it's well and it's nice, but at the same time if you were expecting a certain type of way for the movie to play out and and it goes the opposite way of what you were expecting, you might get disappointed. So mm. but but I would say that I I felt like the the transitions that they did, the plot, everything felt comfortable. Um, it was cool seeing a lot of like this mythology in into it because it it actually gets pretty uh, mythical. Okay. Um, and it it's like not only is it mythical though, but it also feels like although they're they're doing this like God kind of praying in certain cases, there's moments where you can tell it was done by human hands but but because they felt like they were empowered by the gods like it just mm -hmm. it, it, it like it it got them what they needed to get done I'm, I'm a big fan of like viking lore love the viking show um you know so i i it's it's definitely on my list i have to see it um i've seen a lot of people online saying like you know they've watched this movie and that they want to go and buy a copy of like assassin's creed valhalla and stuff like that like so it, it seems like you know it's, yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah um but it it was it was better than i thought because i i was thinking that we were just gonna see like a ton just a ton of fighting like kind of like um zack snyder style of, of fighting where it's like just slow cap slow motion caps and like but but it was actually very much a lot of plot, a lot of story, a lot of setting, and I lo and I love that. I love conversations. I love the things that that they go through, and yeah. I love how kind of you know in the time it is, because yeah. it it really it really feels like you know the stuff that they do in in, in the movie. It's a little gross, but like yeah. <laughs> in other in other times, like. It, I'm like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, the, Vi the Viking lore is fascinating, bro. Like, you know, like they genuinely believed, like when it rained, it was Thor, like you know, talking to them. You know, like you know, they'd see thunder and lightning, and they'd be like, Thor is speaking to us. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. Well, it's it's cool, bro. They, like, it's really cool, really cool. Yeah, so it's definitely on my list. I don't know if I'll go to the theater to see it, but I'll absolutely be watching it when it's uh when it's home released 100 percent. yeah all right guys that was a fantastic cast as always a marvelous chat um we'll see you next week or this so this coming sunday so uh we'll be talking episode five of moon Knight, and uh just keep your ear to the ground if we have any other nerdy news from the week just make sure to bring it up all right all right later guys have a good rest yeah. of your weekend you have too. a good one everyone Bye-bye.